Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. If you love craft beer or even craft spirits, the company I'll be talking about in today's video might be the company for you, Mighty Craft. This company has been on the ASX for too long, three and a half years or something like that, and actually, in fact, hasn't been in existence for very long since 2017. But this company is growing and they also have developed a craft beer that is gaining popularity. So this is an introduction to this company. You really haven't looked at this company in depth before, but based off their December quarter results, uh, potentially, just potentially, this company has reached a very important inflection point. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't drink beer. Uh, I do drink whiskey on occasion. And when I say on occasion, fairly rarely. I'm just not an alcohol sort of person, uh, particularly when it comes to beer. But one of the better known brands for Mighty Craft is Better Beer, which has been developed in-house, um, if I did read correctly. And that has been going gangbusters in the recent one or two years since it entered the market. But they have a few other brands here, including Jetty Road Brewery, Mish, Mishmatch, Mismatch Brewing, 78 Degrees, Seven Seasons, and Kangaroo Island Spirit. I'm probably more likely to try 78 Degrees, their Australian whiskey, even their vodka or gin. Kangaroo Island has gin, wild gin, and pure vodka. And the one down the bottom here, just next to me on this side, Green Ant Gin, Native Yam Vodka, and Bush Apple Gin. In fact, that does look interesting uh, to me, but no interest in the beer on the left-hand side there. Mighty Craft is a craft beverage accelerator. The reason I put the accelerator there is because that's what they used in their prospectus. I have no idea what accelerator is. I'm assuming they use that term because this was just before COVID-19 in terms of buying up um, craft beverage uh, companies, that sort of thing, or breweries, whatever you want to call it. And actually have done that. They have made quite a few acquisitions since they listed on the ASX. Not only have they made acquisitions, they also will be de-investing um, some non-core investments as well. They have mentioned that a couple of times in the past few months. Company founded in 2017 and listed on the ASX December 2019, just before COVID-19, as Founders First. So they have changed the name from Founders First to Mighty Craft, and that's probably a good call because Mighty Craft is probably a better, better suited name. That's just my opinion. Mark cap of this company at 17 cents is 61 million, and the enterprise value is 82 million because this company does have a little bit of debt. I'll talk about that during or later in the video. And the ticker for this company is MCL. Now, one really intriguing thing I found when I threw, went through Founders First uh, Prospectus back in 2019 was this particular table. Main beer industry participants in Australia in, in 2019. So we have two really big uh, companies, Carlton United Breweries, which own Carlton Draft, Victoria Bitter, all brands I know, Great Northern, Peel Blonde, Crown Lager, even those brands I know do know a little bit. And also um, Lion, which owns Forex, Tui's, Han, and the other one, Jones Bogue. So Carlton United, United Breweries is 49% by market share, and Lion is 40%. Then you have Cooper's, which is 5%, Asahi Beverages, which is 2%, and Coca-Cola Amateur, which was 1% back then. Now, the really interesting thing about this is that Carlton United Breweries is actually owned by Asahi, which is a Japanese company. Lion is also owned by a Japanese company called Kieran Holdings. So, in fact, 89% of the beer market back in 2019, was actually owned by Japanese companies. The other interesting thing here is the craft acquisitions these companies have made over the past uh, few years. And I actually have heard some of these as well. James Squire, which is owned by Lion, uh, Little Creatures by Lion, White Rabbit, Kosciuszko, Byron Bay Brewing, uh, Cricketers Arms, Mountain Goat, and Green Beacon. So it's just really interesting, in my opinion, that the main beer players 
in Australia, actually owned by Japanese companies. The current CEO of Mighty Craft is Mark Hazeman. He's also the managing director. Now, to be fair with you, I don't know the difference between CEO and managing director. Sometimes the leader of a company is called the managing director. Sometimes it's called the CEO. Sometimes it's called the both. So I haven't really delved deeply into the difference between the CEO and managing director, but there must be some sort of difference there. Anyway, Mark Hazeman has been with uh, Minecraft for about five years. He was appointed to the Minecraft board on the 19th of November, 2018. And he does have a fair bit of experience in this area. In fact, he did hold a senior role. What time of senior role? I don't know. They don't mention it here. But he did have a senior role with Carlton and United Fury. So he does have that experience. Exactly what you want. He also had some roles, according to this, with SAB Miller and Lion. So he definitely has the experience that you want for this type of company. Now to the company's half-year results for financial year 23. They released these results in February, about two months ago, or maybe just less than two months ago. Um, I'm not going to show you the profit and loss statement, but this company was loss making by about five or seven million dollars. So if you just focus on the profit and loss statement, you get a little bit of a different picture of how this company is performing if you just looked at the statement of cash flows. Because if you just looked at the statement of cash flows, this company was only operating cash flow negative by just over one million dollars compared to last year, seven point one million dollars. But if you dig a little bit deeper, you'll notice that interest and other finance charges paid was $1.3 million. So this company didn't have any debt. This company would have been operating cash flow positive for the first half of financial year 23. But they're not because they do have borrowings. But the company also spent $1.3 million on capital expenditure. So they're still burning through a little bit of cash, but nothing like they were burning through one year ago. Now, this company does make acquisitions. So you have seen, if you have followed this company for the last three years since they listed on the ASX, quite a few announcements in regards to acquisitions. So last year, they made an acquisition of a company and spent $25.7 million and also raised $34.6 million through a capital raising. So that's something you have to be aware of, of as well. You also notice if you go down to proceeds from borrowings in the cash flows from financing activities, last year, $5.8 million. This year, $5.8 million as well. So that's one thing I'm a little bit wary about this company is their debt. And that debt has been increasing over the past few years. And talking about debt, I always look at Section 7 of the Appendix 4C or 5B of a company, which talks about the financing facilities and goes in depth of those financing facilities. For instance, Mighty Craft has a $20 million financing facility or loan facility with pure asset management. And the particulars of that loan facility are three-year term at interest rate of 8.5%. They also have an other facility, 7.3 million. It says in brackets there, please specify, but they don't specify what that 7.3 million. So overall, total financing facilities, $27.3 million. Unused financing facilities, Amiga 1.2 million. And these financing facilities have been growing through time. So this is the reason why the enterprise value of this company is higher than the market because this company has net debt. Now to the whole reason I decided to do a video on Minecraft and it was the December quarter results. Now this is just one quarter. And even though this one quarter was pretty good and a possible inflection point, and the reason I'm saying a possible inflection point because this company was operating cash flow positive in this one quarter by $1.6 million. Now, there could be a few reasons behind that, including changes in working capital, and they didn't go into depth in regards to changes in working capital in the half yearly. So even though this is a possible inflection point for the company, I probably would want confirmation moving forward. The main thing about um, Minecraft is receipts and customers have been increasing at really nice rates over the past few years, up to $33 million in this particular quarter. And if you take away the interest and other costs of finance paid, 937,000, this company would have been operating cash flow positive by about $2.5 million. So more than likely, this company will use EBITDA a lot. So earnings before interest, taxation, depreciation, and amortization, because EBITDA for this company is gonna be significantly higher than the profit, just because this company does spend a lot of money just in interest, 900,000, 
in one quarter alone, so approaching about $5 million a year. Now to the receipts history for Mighty Craft, going all the way back to that first quarter, that's uh, December quarter of 2019, when they had about $2.4 million of receipts, and receipts have grown really nicely since then. A lot of this is through acquisitions, but a lot of this is because of that better beer. Better beer has been going really well. Now, because I don't drink beer, I don't know the quality of better beer, but whatever you think of the quality, it has been doing really well over the past few years, ever since it was launched. So receipts have increased from 2.4 million to 33.1 million. No idea why there was a significant decrease in the September quarter from 27 million to 21 million, but it has rebounded. So when you do see that sort of drop, I would not panic if you do own a company because it could be just a one-off. And the main thing here is trend is definitely up for Mighty Craft. I would like to see a breakdown in the growth of receipts between receipts growth through acquisitions and organic growth in receipts or revenue. I haven't seen that um, done by Mighty Craft just yet, but that would be important moving forward because how much of this growth in receipts or revenue is organic. And that's the main thing I want to see. Mitocraft has set out their ambitions for 2015. I do like this sort of thing from management. The very fact that they are looking forward to the future and they have goals. Uh, even if they don't necessarily reach these goals, it's very important to have goals set in place. So you have a target. So you know if you are performing to your target between now and financial year 25. So these targets in, are in relation to liters sold for beer cider, bottle sold in spirits, and liters for maturing whiskey. And in particular, they are expecting or hoping significant increase in sales of spirits and maturing whiskey. In fact, they hope to triple the amount of spirits sold from 350,000 bottles to 1 million bottles and almost quadrupling maturing whiskey sold from 435,000 litres to 1.5 million litres. Now, they are expecting growth in beer, cider and RTD from 14 million to 24 million litres, but not quite the growth that they are expecting in spirits and maturing whiskey. Now to the chart for Mighty Craft. This is the weekly chart going back to when they listed on the ASX and bad timing when they did list, not company's fault at all. No one knew there was going to be a pandemic back in December 2019. But when this company did list, the share price reached a high, almost a high of 50, 50 cents. And that high in this company's share price was that first week they were traded. And unfortunately for shareholders or investors who bought in at the IPO, share price and if you didn't sell out in the next few weeks the share price fell from that high of about 50 cents to a low of 12.5 cents during the depths of a COVID-19 financial panic and then the share price went on a nice recovery increasing from 12.5 cents back up to 47 and a half cents in August 2020 but since that high in August 2020 share price has been struggling and has been drifting lower and definite double bottom here. So this is a definition of a double bottom. So we had that 12.5 cents low in March 2020. And we've seen recently another 12.5 cent low in October 2022. And as soon as the share price reached 12 and a half cents, we saw some buying coming in and the share price rebound fairly quickly from 12 and a half cents back up to 23 and a half cents. So almost a doubling in the share price in a very short period of time because the share price has hit that double bottom. But the share price has been struggling since that nice little recovery. In fact, the share price is still in a downtrend. No end in sight to the share price moving lower. If the share price did fall below 12.5 cents, that would be a really bearish sign. So the main thing I think what the market is looking for or waiting for is confirmation that this company has reached that inflection point of becoming operating cash flow positive on a continuing basis. Because if they're not, if they burn through cash, increase their debt, there's going to be that increasing concern that uh, this company, uh, uh, about the ongoing concern of this company, particularly with that debt, particularly if interest rates remain high, that sort of thing, and particularly if they're still continuing to burn through cash. So the market wants some sign that this company has made it, hence that inflection point. <clears throat> That's all I have for this introduction to Mighty Craft. If you love drinking beer, if you love drinking spirits, perhaps Mighty Craft is the company 
for you. Or maybe even if you don't like drinking those and you think this company has a great potential future, maybe this company is for you. So the whole reason I do these videos is just to share ideas. And if one person does some further research on MightyCraft, and if that one person decides to take a position in this company, I'd say 12 and a half cents if the share price falls back to that level. And then in say five years, the share price is above $1, then that's a good thing. And that's what I wish. More than likely, I won't take a position in this company uh, unless I see signs that this company can be consistently operating cash flow positive and we see really good growth, uh, organic growth. That's the main thing I'm looking for uh, and less reliance on acquisitions. That's when I might think about taking a position in this company. And the other thing I'll be looking for is an uptrend in the share price. And the chart just doesn't look that healthy right now. So if you have any questions, any thoughts about Minecraft, I'd love to hear from you. So leave your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this day. Have a good day. Bye.